Released in 1998 on the Super Famicom, Rockman Forte was released with the intention, or at least according to Keiji Inafune, of giving a Mega Man title for the younger players who didn't have access to the Sony PlayStation or the Sega Saturn to play Mega Man 8. And speaking of that game, it actually looks a lot like Mega Man 8, in terms of graphics at least. And for the Super Famicom, that's actually very impressive. I mean, sure, the music doesn't have the same CD quality, but it's still enjoyable for sure. Now the first time I experienced this in most international players was through the Game Boy Advance. Though I did pick up the Super Famicom version for the sake of this video, and it's what I'm mostly going to be using because, well, even my patience has its limits. The plot begins with a robot named King declaring war on humanity because something something robot something something humans. Mega Man goes in to stop that along with Bass who is fighting for Dr. Riley because he lost his castle as a result. At least I assume so. The game goes on as you expect from a Mega Man game, so need I say more about the plot? That is until after you beat King, where he has to be reminded that humans should be respected as the creators. Proto Man who is burnt out from blasting King's shield teleports back to Dr. Light's lab for repairs. And after getting the offer to be repaired too, King reveals that this creator is Dr. Wily who revealed himself to be secretly in control of everything and uh, uh. after defeating King yet again, Mega Man base go to stop Dr. Wily's rather questionable plan. With Mega Man wondering if King made it out alive in Yes, he did, apparently. Well, Bass outright admonishes Dr. Wily for being stupid, so of course the Doctor reveals yet another SMRT plan. Blueprints for King 2, which thankfully gets blasted by Proto Man, who finally gets his chance to shine. In a cutscene, while reminding Bass he'll never defeat Mega Man. When it comes to the gameplay, as the name implies, you get to choose Mega Man or Bass, in the same vein as Mega Man X4. Mega Man's gameplay isn't really much different from Mega Man 8, so I won't talk about that again, but he can't swim for some reason. But Bass in his first action platforming game is able to shoot in multiple directions, even downwards, not to mention he can dash and double jump. So with all these features, you think you'd be in for a fun game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> A common complaint I hear about Mega Man 8 is that it's too easy compared to its predecessors. So I guess they decided to make the polar opposite with this game. So hard that I would rather play Mega Man 1 than this game. And if you think I'm kidding, just look at the first stage. And no, I'm not talking about the fact that Proto Man gets sliced in half by King. But the first boss you go against is the Green Devil boss from Mega Man 8. You know, from the Wily Tower? Don't do that! As for everything else, I find the problems show up depending on who you play as. When it comes to the levels, Mega Man perhaps is the worst choice due to his limited abilities compared to Bass who can fire in multiple directions, dash, and double jump. And honestly, I feel like the levels were solely made with Bass's gameplay in mind. With Mega Man, I find myself having to use the ice wall to reach certain ledges, using the master weapons to find secrets and other pathways, and that's par for the course when it comes to the Mega Man games. But when it comes to simple progression like this, then I'm sorry, I'm not okay with that. However, when it comes to the bosses, Base can be a glass cannon compared to Mega Man. While more accurately, Mega Man has the Mega Buster which does more damage than the base variation, even when you upgrade it. Not to mention, he lacks proper assist to restore him like Rock does. With that said, only one of the Robot Masters I found to be easy with the basic Buster, and that is Cold Man. Honestly, considering the last few games where you could take out at least two of the bosses with the Mega Buster, I find that very limiting. If you try to beat any of the other Robot Masters, and I repeat, if you try to beat any of the other ones with the Mega Buster or the Base Buster, you are going to die. So as you expect, you have to use your respective weaknesses to take them down easily. Well, that is except for these two, Burner Man and Dynamo Man. Burner Man, due to its erratic pattern, which hits hard, not to mention his weakness, the Ice Wall, only seems to work when he's using his flamethrower for some reason, and even then, you have to see him get pushed into the spikes, otherwise he just breaks through it. Then there's Dynamo Man who might be my most hated robot master by far. Not so much on his basic pattern as it's easy to get around, if you're playing as Mega Man, but when you get his health down low enough, he can actually regenerate that loss, and that sucks! Unless you manage to get the copy shot going when he starts, he'll be able to fully restore himself, thus starting the fight all over again. 
And did I mention this is more tedious when you're playing as base? Just like Mega Man 7 and 8, you can use bolts to buy upgrades for both characters. And trust me, you will need these upgrades. Though I feel like base gets a little bit shafted in the long run. I mean, sure he can get the treble boost and more power to his buster. And also like the last two games, Mega Man and base can get the energy saver, which trust me, for the later stages is a godsend. But as I said earlier, when it comes to healing, only Mega Man really has the easy options because he has Eddie in the auto recover. When it comes to base, you have to hope that enemies before each boss leave enough life or weapon energy, or by some miracle you avoid every single attack made during a boss fight. While we're on the subject of energy, and the biggest difference from this game in Mega Man 8 is that your weapon energy doesn't automatically refill. Now I'm not just talking about when you die and you have to continue, but when you move on to another stage without getting a game over, your weapon energy is still depleted. Why? Why even do that? It's honestly jarring coming into this game right after Mega Man 8. I'm sure the E-Tanks and the Rush Adapter were missing from that game, but I didn't mind because the game was balanced around that. Mega Man and Base, on the other hand, feel like it was supposed to include the tanks, like Mega Man 2 to 7, but decided not to include it at the last second. But we have yet to touch the tip of the iceberg. We have the King Fortress stages. It's not so much an issue for the first stage because this boss can be taken out relatively easily, despite that annoying monkey, but beware of the platform when you deliver the final shot as you can die and have to start over again. Though when it comes to the second fortress stage, it can eat a dick. My problem really isn't with the level design, but instead it's the bosses, all four of them. The fight with the tank is more boring than hard, but the king's jet. This boss will clench every muscle in your body as you hop across platforms while trying to kill the jet as it dispenses energy, which could be helpful, or a flashbang capsule which can blind you if you hit it. Not to mention, it sends fists that destroy the platforms. On top of that, it has a laser beam that covers most of the screen and does heavy damage! What stands out about this battle is like the tank, there is no health meter so you don't even know your progression. I really don't like that. The the battle against King is slightly less hard. Well, after his shield is broken, it is. But when he merges with the tank and the jet, which I thought were destroyed, the frustration begins again if you're playing as base. As Mega Man, you get a platform which makes it so easy to shoot his head, and not to mention the jewel that shoots a powerful blast. But if you're playing as base and you don't know how to dash just right, you have to painstakingly shoot diagonally up and hope it hits. And what I don't understand is why is it four bosses in one stage? Considering the fact that you have no E tanks, your weapons don't recharge when you die, and even if you lose all your lives, you don't start back right at the boss you died in. No, you have to go all the way back from the beginning of it. Just why? It just feels so unnecessarily stingy and punishing. The final fortress level feels more like stalling because, of course, Wily had to be the final boss of the game. Why it feels like stalling? Because unlike Mega Man 2 to 8, you don't get a teleportation room to fight against the robot masters you faced against before. In fact, you go back to Mega Man 1's design by having to go through the stage and encountering them. Concluding with the final battle with Wily, on top of the problems I listed with this game, do I even need to repeat myself? If I haven't made myself clear, I really did not like Mega Man and Base. It's not only my least favorite classic series game, but it's one of my least favorite Mega Man games, period. I appreciate the fact that it tried to do something a little bit more ambitious compared to Mega Man 7 and 8, but the end result left a lot to be desired. And I also like the fact this was intended for those who can play Mega Man 8, which is probably why this game looks a lot like it and why two of the robot masters are recycled for this game, but the game comes off more like a punishment than a consolation prize. Playing through the game, it felt like for the most part it was made with base in mind, with Mega Man being an afterthought. Not that that helped, because both campaigns just felt like a chore to complete. I mean, you ever have those games that you beat in but you have no satisfaction for doing so? This is one of those games for me. Immediately I had to use save states on my Retron 5 in order to complete this game. But honestly, I don't feel bad for doing so, because this game doesn't feel like a fair challenge. It's trial and error gameplay with RNG progression and, well, that's just not fun to me. When it comes to the GBA port, like Sonic Genesis, the camera is too focused on Mega Man and Base. So basically, imagine all the problems I talked about, but on a cramped screen. In the kicker, there's no dedicated dash button for base, so get used to double tapping. And honestly, there's really not much more to say about this game without repeating myself. It would just be more efficient if I just wrote down in Sharpie, this game sucks on it. And to add insult to injury, on the virtual console, this is the only port of the game you can find. I think KJ and Afune just robbing me would be more efficient. Oh wait. Stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch.
A scratch? 